Hello, Matt here from Megan Hub, and today we're going to be looking at the much anticipated SMK Victory CP2. So it took a while, but I finally got my hands on one. So let's get straight into it. The box itself is a lot bigger than normal, but that's because obviously it holds a lot of things internally, which we'll get into in a second. But first, let's look at some of the information on the front of the box, as we always do on these reviews. So you can see that it's available in 177 and 22. This particular version is a 22, and it is, as it shows on the box, the black version. Now, obviously, you can get this in a camo version as well. But as I say, this one is the black version. Now, there's a, there's a few other bits of information in the box. Um, up top here, you can see that it says up to 500 feet per second in 177 and up to 400 feet per second in 22. Now that is in its pistol format. And I have done some chrono results on this, which we'll show you the footage of later. And I can tell you that it gets very, very, very close to these claim figures. A lot of these um, these companies will exaggerate the feet per second figures by at least 100, sometimes 150, 200 feet per second. These, bang on, absolutely bang on. There's no line involved uh, in these figures. And then obviously in rifle format, as you can see, in 177 it does up to 600 feet per second, and in uh, 2.2 it does up to 500 feet per, feet per second. On the front there is a few bits of information. Obviously it says capable velocity for dozens of effective shots. Portable bolt action multi-shot CO2 rifle, easy to cock and load, adjustable rear sight, adjustable trigger, manual safety. The barrel length in pistol format is 450 millimeters, and in rifle format it's 868 millimeters. It has a width of 42 millimeters and a height of 185 millimeters. For the box itself, that's about it. On the face here, it does tell you what version you've got. Obviously, we've got 22 here, so that's marked up as 22, and. Uh, We'll lift her open and we'll see what you get inside. Nice foam cover to keep everything protected. We'll take this out of the way. You do, with everything, get an instruction manual. It shows you black camo and obviously it goes through information of uh, how to convert the barrel, how to change it all, safety features uh, and safety rules, how to install CO2, etc, etc. Now, obviously, there's a foam cut out, as you can see, for everything in here, um, which makes it nicely laid out. If you wanted to keep it in this, you could. It's a bit of a, a nightmare if you keep want to keep it in rifle format, um, but if you're keeping it in pistol format, everything's nice and laid out here for you. So, you do get your stock, which we'll put to the side. You do get a pack of extra spare seals. Should any of seals go, which is nice and handy to have. You do get a nice moderator, and this is actually really, really effective. And I would recommend using it in pistol and rifle format because it does quiet down the bark on this a lot. So that is really, really good. You do get two magazines. They are the same magazines that are used in the CP1, and we'll look into these in more detail in, this in shortly. You get your long barrel and it does come with a barrel band and an extra sight adjustable sight on there and then finally the pistol itself you can see that both sides so we'll just move this box out of the way and we'll put it down there and we'll have a closer look so Really, I think with it being a, I know the CP1 itself was a almost like a target style pistol, a cheap version of a target style pistol, which means the grip is predominantly a one-handed grip. There's not that much room. I mean, it is a lot better than the CP1 because the CP1 had a, a palm shelf on it. You really couldn't get a two-handed grip on there. This is a bit easier, but it is still a little bit uncomfortable. I do have quite small hands and... Even then, I mean, with this little nub in there, just trying to get a, a good two-handed grip on it is quite hard. Um, so I think it's predominantly a single-handed pistol, uh, as, a, as a pistol format. However, it is 
very durable plastic it feels very very solid it's got a nice contour to it like holding holding it as you would this sits nicely in the palm there and it just gives it that little bit of extra stability uh, and then obviously you've got where the, the thumb would sit just to keep that it fits in really really well I can imagine I mean say I've got small hands if you did have bigger hands you may struggle slightly but the contouring although minimal then there's no finger grooves it is really really good it is a one piece section so it does extend all the way forward and down um, one thing I do like about the pistol itself is some of the improvements they've made from the original CP1 now I don't know if any of you have had a go with a CP1 or seen a CP1 it is a very very similar format and layout I believe the breech block itself is identical um, certainly the cocking bolt is the same and looks almost to be the same layout and configuration as the CP1 um, you do have a safety on this version on the trigger you just push it in and that locks it off and again take it off and it releases your safety and you can use the gun now as I was saying over the CP1 they have cut in a nice little window into the tube there and when a CO2 is slotted in you can just see the CO2 and that is fantastic if you're um, you not used the pistol for a while you can't remember if you've left a CO2 in it or something like that and you don't want to risk opening it up you don't not in a really position to cock it and fire it or anything like that this little viewing window just allows you to see the top end of the CO2 and if it's got one in so it's almost like a safety feature as such now it does use the same tube screw as like before look at and your CO2 slots down in and then screwing this back on pushes pressure down into the piercing valve and pierces the CO2 now one thing that does come with this that they've improved over the CP1 is unscrewing out the end there is a little tool that you can just slot in and use it to tighten or loosen it off now one thing I did find is when you put a fresh CO2 in it it seems to stop about here now you do need to tighten this up all the way so all the threads are tightened and it's in all the way otherwise it doesn't pierce the CO2 and at around about this point here it does get a bit tight uh, or too tight for using your fingers so all you have to do is just slot your little tool in push it round same with that side and then just finishing off nipping it up and then you can slot that back in and screw it back in fantastic little tool great little idea and it certainly helps with uh, in the aid of putting a CO2 in now the barrel itself is removable which we'll get into shortly obviously this does convert into a rifle there's three grip screws in the top there that just loosen off and then the barrel slots out it is screw cut for the moderator and you do get a little thread protector and then your moderator just screws on the end like so does add a little bit of length to the pistol but it does make it a hell of a lot quieter a hell of a lot quieter these have got quite a bark on them with, with CO, when using the CO2 without the moderator and um, just adding that, that moderator on really does reduce it tenfold now I'll just take this off You do have a front blade it's not adjustable and it doesn't have any markings on it like a white dot or maybe a luminous dot like you find on a lot of pistols um, it can make target acquisition a little bit harder however it's not too bad the rear sights are fully adjustable for wind design elevation so you should have a little screw there that you can just turn and that will raise the elevation and then the little screw there, sorry my apologies, the little screw there is for uh, elevation and that one's for windage 
and that can be then adjusted up, down, left and right to suit how you want. Um, on the bottom we do have your little toggle and the toggle for this is what you want to do to it says and that comes out of the way this little section comes off and that is where your stock slots in so we'll look at that in a minute just move these out of the way one thing I forgot to mention was with these obviously you do get just put that down there a single shot tray which is in my opinion a lot more accurate using this they do have a little rare earth magnet on the bottom there and then as you can see just there is the corresponding magnet which once you slot it in just holds it in place and keeps it from moving i would recommend using the the single shot tray one thing i have found with the magazine which we'll bring in here is i don't know if it was pellet the pellets i was using in particular um, they did have quite big skirts on them, so that could be the cause of it. But I, I found it really, really hard to push the bolt forward and get a pellet into the barrel. Um, so I did, instead of resolve, to using the single shot tray. Now, same again, a little rear earth magnet on there, and that just slots in place. Now, one thing I did find when I was trying to use this with the, the magazine in is, if you look down there, you can only just see the front blade when the magazine's in place. Now I don't know what has happened there because if I remember rightly on the CP1 when this magazine was in you could see a hell of a lot more of the front blade than you can there. So I don't know if it's something that's slightly different but to me it all does look the same and very very similar so I'm not sure what this crack is there. Now the magazine it is a spring tensioned one sorry it's this way and all you have to do is hold the pressure on the spring drop a pellet in from the rear the wrong way around which will hold it and then you just slot your pellets in one by one until you get back around and then the spring tension every time you take a shot moves the next pellet around and in place I'll put that back in there so we don't lose it and what we'll do next is We'll show you how to build it up as a rifle. So one thing you are going to need to build this up into a rifle is a 2mm Allen key. Now, you don't get supplied one of these in the box, which is a bit frustrating. Um, so if you are looking at buying one of these pistols, I would recommend going out. I've got like a, an Allen key set, something like this. Um, I, I appreciate the majority probably will have Allen keys, but if you don't, you will need to get a 2mm at least a 2mm Allen key to um, to be able to change this and convert this into a rifle. Now, this is a bit fiddly so I do appreciate if it takes time but what you need to do is you need to loosen these three grip screws off on top. Now, be very, 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 very careful with these. I, uh, I managed to lose one of these once. Luckily, I managed to find it but they are very, very, very fiddly and they can be easily lost. So... Please do be careful. So we'll just loosen them off like that. Now the barrel itself should now just pull out like so. You can then get your longer barrel. And, it's just, and this then in turn, I'm trying to keep this in camera so you can see, like so, pushes and slots in like that. You can line it all up, let me just have a look there, get your allen key, tighten these all back up again, and just nip them up, they don't have to be too tight, but just enough that they don't come loose, like, so, your barrel band slips over the top, and then uses, a what says on mine a 332 allen key just take that out and then you can just nip up this little grip screw or a screw on that and that just keeps your barrel band from moving 
Obviously you have another little side there. There is a nice little rail underneath if you want to attach a bipod, which is uh, a nice little addition. And then again, you've got your screw end to add on a, or your provided moderator. Now, the opposite end, you get the stock, put that in place. As you can see, there's just a little, and you might be able to see, there's a little hole there, which is what that little prong bit slots into. That just goes in like that. And then your little screw that came out a bit before, slots in place. Like so. And then you have your rifle. Just like that. Um, it's still very, very compact. In the shoulder, it still feels very, very small, which is fantastic. Uh, it makes life a lot, lot easier. Um, it, it'd be ideal for small children uh, and even like grown adults, but obviously it does feel a lot smaller in the shoulder. It's very, very pointable. It's very, very light. It's very, very sturdy. Uh, it's just an overall fantastic pistol uh, and, or even rifle in this format. Um, again, you add your moderator onto the end there uh, and that keeps the bark off it. Um, what I'm going to do now, we'll just flick to a couple of targets. Um, well, first we'll look at the the uh, running over the chronograph. You'll see the results on the chronograph in both pistol format and rifle format. And then I'll also show you some targets. And you'll see the pistol one first and then the rifle one. And then we'll come back and we'll see, uh, have our final thoughts on it. Okay, so fresh CO2, pistol format. We're going to do five shots through the chrono and we'll see what results we get. Okay, fresh CO2 again, rifle format this time, five shots. So, final thoughts, what do I think? I think it's an absolutely fantastic and ingenious idea. SMK have really moved on from the CP1. They've not just bought a CP2 out and renamed it the CP2 and just done nothing with it. You've got your, your threaded barrel, so you can add a moderator on. You've got the, the fact that you can take the barrel out and exchange it for a longer one. You can put the stock on. You've got your little window in your, your, your cylinder so you can see if there's a CO2 in it. You've got your little tool in the end of the cylinder so you can tighten the end up and re remove it. It's just an overall fantastic and ingenious idea. One thing I didn't like was the magazine. It didn't seem to index very well. The CP1 was slightly the same, but I don't know if it, it could be down to the pellets I was using. They are quite big skirted pellets that I was using, which could be causing the problems. But it also could be the fact that because you can remove the barrel so easily, unlike the CP1, 
there may be some slight alignment issues with the the probe and the barrel i mean the, the barrels are snug fit it does fit really really well but there could be a slight little alignment issue as well as the fact i was using bigger pellets but that's just a niggly thing if you could find some like gsbs that are they're in a smaller skirt uh, than than the ones I was using. I was using RWS Super Domes. Um, if you can find some small skirt pellets, that might eliminate that problem whatsoever. But overall, this is fantastic. If you've got a young kid that you want to get into shooting, get one of these. You know they're hundred about one hundred and seventy five pounds, give or take ten pound either side, depending on where you go. But for for one hundred and seventy five pounds and an introduction to the air gun, or for a young person, or even just something for ratting or close quarters thing this is an absolutely fantastic configuration in pistol and rifle format if you did like what you see uh give us a thumbs up if you've liked it even more give us a subscribe and why not share it with your friends and we will see you next time